Thanks for joining us on Lina TV News. I am Aisha Gambo Azumi. Niger State Government and Vice President Tinibu to inaugurate agricultural equipment. Nigeria Labor Congress makes 17 points demand. Members of the organized private sector decrease rate of unemployment in the country. Now the news in full. Farmer Omar Muhammad Bago was at the Aso Villa Abuja to extend in an invitation to the President Ahmed Bola Tinibu to the state for the inauguration of 1,000 tractors and several other agricultural machineries acquired for the take-off of the mechanized farming. Farmer Governor Omar Bago used the opportunity to discuss at length with the President on his agricultural renovation, stressed that Niger State is pious to performing to transforming the agricultural sector through mechanized farming. He said the state has signed several agreements with agri-business partners for the actualization of its agricultural revolution in the state. Responding, President Bola Ahmed Tinibu said that the effort of the farmer governor Umar Bago is quite commendable. He called on other states to borrow a leaf from Niger state so that the yearnings and aspiration of the federal government as regards to food security and sufficiency can be achieved. Principals and parents of secondary school students in Niger State have been admonished to rescue secondary school students and their words from the menace of drug abuse. Dr. Muhammad Kaka Jibril gave the admonition on the platform of a, a day sensitization program organized for principals of secondary schools in MENA by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, Niger State Command. Dr. Kaka Jubli, who gave a lecture on the topic drug abuse prevention, treatment and control, said the responsibility of fighting drug abuse shouldn't be left for school teachers alone, but parents should also do well, for home, well from home to encourage the work done by teachers rather than fighting the school authorities for correcting and disciplining their words. He also observed that the menace of drug abuse has become the order of the day, stressing that principals of schools should, through the primary, secondary, and tertiary ways of prevention, caution the use of drugs in the school. Earlier, the state commander of NDLEA, Commander Musa Bewelin, stated that the need for educating secondary school principals on the prevention of drug abuse has become necessary, pointing out that the fact, pointing out that the children spend five days in a, school, in a week under their guidance, and most and most school authorities are ignorant of the possible ways to help prevent the abuse of the use of drugs. He encouraged all principals and parents to help load all they have learned and properly counsel the children out on the ways to prevent drug abuse, organizing guidance and counseling section for the students. President Bola Ahmed Tinibu has explained why he decided to withdraw subsidy on petrol and maintained that although it was a difficult and challenging decision, it was necessary for Nigeria future economic growth. President Tinibu stated this while speaking at the opening session of the seventh edition of the Nigerian International Energy Summit in Abuja. He disclosed that by removing the subsidy, he had created a more transparent and accountable energy sector. The president stated that Nigeria was currently at a crossroad of rapidly transforming global energy landscape. He explained that the energy security was of paramount importance as it is not a national concern but a global imperative. In the face of emerging challenges, both geopolitical and technological, President Tinibu, who was represented by Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Iris Malagi, stated that Nigeria must ensure the resilience of its energy infrastructure was assured. As a fallout of the decision to remove fuel subsidy and collapse the FX market, Nigerians have recently been experiencing economic hardship and worse by skyrocketing price of commodities. The president, however, stressed that the funds that were previously allocated to subsidizing petroleum products were now redirected towards developing and upgrading energy and other social infrastructure. 
the Nigerian Labour Congress, Niger State Council, and Trade Union Congress staged a peaceful protest to express their displeasure over the hardship people are going through, such as hunger, insecurity, and poverty. The protesters, the protest which took off from Labour House IBB Road terminated at the Niger State House of Assembly MENA. Addressing the Speaker and other members of the House shortly after arriving at the Assembly complex, the State NLC Chairman Comrade Idris Abdul Karim Lafene disclosed that the protest was aimed at drawing the attention of government at all levels to address the challenges confronting Nigerians. Comrade Idris Lafene enumerated the problems to include hunger, insecurity, and poverty, infrastructural decay, and therefore called for the immediate intervention to address these challenges. Comrade Lafene reiterated that labor movement is the voice of the people, hence the need for the reversal of some unpopular government policies to save, to save the people. He frowned at the high cost of living in all spheres of human endeavors across the country saying prices of goods and services has skyrocketed as a result of the removal of fuel subsidy, thereby making it difficult to assess foodstuff, fertilizer, and other daily needs. The Labour Chairman urged stakeholders and government to take drastic action to address the lingering crisis. Earlier, the Niger State Speaker, House of Assembly, Barista Abdul Malik Sarukindaji, lauded the NLC leadership for embarking on the peaceful protest and assured that their message will be delivered to the appropriate authorities. Sarkindaji also promised that the House of Assembly will take the NLC demand at the plenary. The protest witnessed large turnout of all affiliated unions in the state. Meanwhile, the National Council of Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, has made a seven-point demand to President Bola Ahmed Tinibu to assuage the poverty, hunger, and mass suffering inflicted on the citizens by the policies of the federal government. This is even as Governor Sieyi Makindi of Oyo State participated in a protest in Ibadan, the Oyo State capital. However, leaders of the NLC have suspended the two-day nationwide protest after the first day, saying it is, its suspension was based on the fact that street action achieved overwhelming success. In a communique at the end of its National Executive Council meeting in Abuja, the President of NLC and Acting General Secretary Joe Ajiro and Ismail Bello said the NEC in session therefore reviewed the execution of the first day of the nationwide protest to assess its effectiveness and take decision on further necessary action to guide Congress to guide the Congress in its efforts at engaging government to protect the people and Nigerian workers from increasing hardship. The presidency has faltered the nationwide protest by the Nigerian Labour Congress, alleging that some people are leveraging the situation in the country for their political agenda. The special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Ajuri Ngelele, in an interview said the protests organized across the country by NLC were unnecessary. Workers and other Nigerians in the federal capital territory, Abuja, Lagos, Ibadan, Kano, Bini, Oshogo, Port Haikot, Niger, Jos, Katsine, and other urban centers protested the economic hardship in the country. Nigerians have been grappling with economic difficulties on the heels of the fuel subsidy removal and other economic reforms being implemented by the federal government. Insisting that the protest was needless, the president's spokesperson in Gelele said the federal government had commenced efforts to elevate, in, to elevate the hardship in the country. Ajiro led workers to the National Assembly Abuja, where he presented the demands of workers to the chairman of the Senate Committee on Labor, Employment and Productivity, Senator Dickett Plank, for delivery to the president, Bola Tinibu. However, the Labour President Ajiro said that the protest will serve as a signal to the government to immediately tackle the country's challenges. 
The federal government has declared to Western nations that Nigeria will not stop the exploration of fossil fuels despite the pressure being mounted by the West for the discontinuation of investment in fossil. In, it also stated that some of the countries in Europe and America had been investing in fossil but Nigerians have been grappling with economic difficulties on the heels of the fuel subsidy removal and other economic reforms being implemented by the federal government. Insisting that the protest was needless, the president's spokesperson in Gelele said the federal government had commenced efforts to elevate, in, to elevate the hardship in the country. Ajiro led workers to the National Assembly Abuja where he presented the demands of workers to the chairman of the Senate Committee on Labor, Employment and Productivity, Senator Dickett Plank, for delivery to the President Bola Tinibu. However, the Labor President Ajiro said that the protest would serve as a signal to the government to immediately tackle the country's challenges. The federal government has declared to Western nations that Nigeria will not stop the exploration of fossil fuels despite the pressure being mounted by the West for the discontinuation of investment in fossil. In, it also stated that some of the countries in Europe and America had been investing in fossil but were asking Africans to stop further exploration of crude oil on the continent. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Heineke Lukberi, Luke who disclosed this at a summit in Abuja, also revealed that the federal government was working hard to halt to com the complete divestment of international oil companies out of Nigeria. The minister noted that Norway and many other countries in the West were still investing in fossil fuel exploration, but ironically, they had been urging African countries to halt production. He also stated that the country must increase its crude oil production in order to meet both domestic and international obligations. He expressed optimism that the rehabilitation of Nigerian refineries, the demand for foreign exchange for the importation of petroleum products will be reduced once the refineries come on stream. And that's about the size of our package on Lina TV News today. Do well to join us on all our social media platform at Lina TV 247 or visit our website on www.linatv.com.ng. My name is Aisha Gambo Azumi. Have a lovely day.